what I was inspired to do was to really dig down into what makes things fun. You know, why do we play games? So what I did was I looked uh, across, uh, across, uh, across games. So I studied everything from Halo to Tetris, people playing at home, school, and work, young and old, all the platforms, cross-gender. And I noticed that there were a lot of similarities between what the, favorite, the people, players' favorite moments in games were. And so what I did was I collected those moments on videotape, and then I used Paul Ekman's facial action coding, simplified it for games, uh, to measure their emotional responses. So there's seven emotions you can measure in the face, others you can measure in the body. And what I did is I took those favorite moments in games and did a cluster analysis. It turns out that they group into you know, four roughly categories of emotion. And then looking at those emotions, I looked at, well, what were the similarities of the types of decisions players were making? What kinds of play styles, what kind of play mechanics were involved? And that's how we came up with the four keys to fun. So that's our model with um, essentially, that's basically the research says that, that games create engagement in essentially four ways. There's the hard fun of challenge and mastery, the frustration that leads to what we call fiero, that yes, I won, uh, you know, the, where you get the boss monster. Uh, there's this wonderful feeling in the body that's on personal accomplishment. You know, usability, you know, making things easy to use won't get you there at that emotion at all. In fact, you have to feel frustrated and so frustrated about ready to throw the control through the window. If then at that point you win, that's when you get that feeling like, yes, we, we really did it. Very, very powerful emotion. And players will play hours of games, both hardcore and casual gamers will play hours to get that, that kind of feeling. And then we noticed that, well, it wasn't just about the points and scoring. You know, like basketball, it's fun to shoot, you know, it's fun to shoot hoops for score, but it's also just fun to just shoot hoops, right? You know, it wouldn't be fun if the basketball hoop were like this big, you know, it, you know it's, it's nice that it's that small, right? Uh, and so it makes it, it makes it more challenging. Uh, but players also like other things like just dribbling the ball is fun or playing without a score. And so there's this easy fun that goes along with the hard fun. So there's a hard fun of challenge and mastery. The easy fun is more about exploration and role play, storytelling. Uh, we get mechanics involving ambiguity and detail. So in The Sims, you know, you can put The Sims in your pool and then pull out the ladders to see what happens. You can drive a racetrack backwards. In Grand Theft Auto, you can go from point A to point B on a mission, the hard fun of the game, right? But at any point in time, you can actually also, they give you, like, a, like I'm improv theater, they give you a plate glass window, they give you a freeway exit ramp, parking meters, and it's up to you as the player to figure out how those, re how those interact. And so with that, that kind of mechanic, we, we really, they're very different type of, um, they're very different types of um, interactions that we're going. And what we noticed is that with the four keys is that best-selling games tend to have three out of the four. And if players wouldn't do just one, they tended to also, within a 20-minute session, have three out of the four that they played, and their favorites were three out of, you know, roughly three out of the four. So that's hard fun, uh, frustration of fear. That's easy fun with uh, curiosity, wonder, and surprise. Wonder is this great emotion that actually adults feel very rarely. So that's wonderful that games and movies you know, can give it, give it to us, but games especially. Then the third one is uh, what we call serious fun. So uh, in easy fun, you get a lot of feedback for you know, car, plate glass window, see what happens. Uh, in serious fun, it's actually all about the reward. So how do you feel before, during, and after? So we find players play to bless, blow off frustration at their boss or at their teacher. They also play, though, for you know, getting the feeling of getting smarter uh, or of um, you know, creating some, you know, making a difference in the world. There is uh, people playing, again, Brain Age to Lose Weight, Dance Dance Revolution to, you know, um, I'm sorry, Brain Age to Get Smarter, and Dance Dance Revolution to Lose Weight. Uh, but we also see stuff that um, really represents who they are. So there's a lot of, there's about to be a real surge in eco games, um, which we, we're actually making, making one. Uh, which we can talk about in a bit, that uh, this our game, our game tilt, and that's the, that allows players to express the, how, their values in the world. So it's not just about playing games as a separate, but actually how it reflects the, uh, on them and what they value, what they, what their, um, uh, what their, what their motives, what their motives are, what they, what they like about, um, and want to, want to see happen. Uh, so that's serious fun. That's excitement and uh, relaxation. A lot of other emotions, repetition, rhythm, uh, you know, music get, in, get into that. The, you, we're using the fun of games to do real work often. Uh, serious gaming, where you're doing a firefighting simulator or a, you know, a nuclear you know, power plant simulator to learn. Uh, that's all part of serious fun. And then the last form of engagement is uh, people fun. And people fun is really, it's an amazing area. Uh, you've got emotion. The emotion that we can measure is amusement, so laughter. So you can laugh, uh, and whenever you see laughter, then you know that you're getting people to engage with each other. And with people fun, we have a lot of mechanics that are social mechanics uh, that, that create social bonding, uh, that bring people together. Everyone's got a friend, for example, that can make you do the roll on the floor laughing thing, right? And when you can actually then get up and breathe again, you actually feel closer to that person. 
And so what's interesting about that is that there's not a, um, a disconnect between, um, I mean, it actually, it actually doesn't um, separate, the game doesn't separate, it actually pulls people together. And what we get there is we get um, the ability to actually create social bonds. Um, I really hate the word social capital. A lot of folks in the social media space talk about, oh, well, we're building social capital, when in fact what you're really doing is you're weaving social, the social fabric between, between people. So uh, some of the factors that go into it are creating uh, social tokens, for example. So if you have mechanics in your game that could then be mutated or, or um, changed in a certain way and pass from player to player, that can actually increase the social, um, the social bonding that goes on in the game. So if I give you a health pack, um, I feel generous, you feel gratitude, and then you know, someone else might feel, see that, that action and say, oh, elevation, wow, human kindness. And then later on in the game, you know, that, 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 uh, that situation may be reversed. Or you might exper experience schadenfreude, which is you know, you, the pleasure when, someone you, uh, when one of your rivals you know, experiences misfortune. Or nachas, which is this pleasure and pride when someone you help succeeds. So when you mentor someone and they succeed, you feel this emotion around them. So if you think about it, we can do just by adding these different verbs, adding new verbs to the games, we can actually change what we call an emotion profile. So just like wine or chocolate has this flavor profile, you know, you have a nose and a head and a nice long finish, games and other entertainment produce a series of sensations in the body that can be intentionally designed. They already create, um, and even media products, other media products create, uh, social media, for example, creates certain, have certain emotional signatures in the body, if you will. Um, and you can actually intentionally design them uh, to, create, uh, to create different uh, things that really go with the, the task at hand. So for example, the social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, all of them have a number of different verbs that really match, uh, that really match this, uh, this profile of friendship and getting closer. So for example, um, the best-selling games on Facebook you know, are the ones that are about you know, people, plants, and, um, and you know, people, plants, and pets. Okay? And all of those have wonderful social emotions. You know, mafias, uh, you know, you've got Farmville you know, gardening, and you've got um, you know, Pet Society or um, you know, the, uh, the animal, you know, animal Crossing kind of clones. And all of those are really revolving around friendship. You also have verbs. So the verb in Facebook of poke, you know, so that by adding that feature, poke, that kind of is like, well, that's a poke in the ribs, maybe. So that's friendly. So it creates a little bit what we call a Michi. You know, this, it's Italian for this friendly, you know, friendly kind of feeling. Um, but what we can do is with that is you can then actually, by adding these verbs or taking them out, you can adjust this, this, this emotion, emotion profile. Same thing with Twitter. So Twitter actually has a very, uh, a very challenge, a big challenge for it right now because uh, it's got a follow you, follow me kind of game going on. So you have underneath your avatar photo, you've created a game because by putting that hard fun, that score, how many followers I have underneath my, uh, underneath my headshot, well, that kind of encourages certain behavior because people will behave to maximize that score because that's, that's what a score does, right? So what you do then is friend as many people who then friend you back, and so then your score goes up. But then what happens to your feed of your following, if you're following you know, a million people, are you really following any of them? Can you really use it to, you know, you know, stay up or, or really touch base with them? Or is it just, you know, uh, a lot of people have, you know, zero tweets and, you know, a thousand followers. It's like, well, what's that all about? It's not, and so in a sense that by putting a score there, um, players actually broke the game. They broke the game a little bit. And so the added addition of lists and obviously, you know, some other mechanics like retweeting and DMing and stuff, direct messaging and stuff. That all helps bind the, um, you know, bind the, bind the game, bind, bind the game, the game that is Twitter, bind that social experience together. And so you can see how all these these actions create have a, a sense of cloud of emotion around them, and that's what uh, makes the experience really fill out. Just like a film would with story and character, we're actually painting in a sense the UI. We're actually painting the experience with emotion uh, and attention. And essentially, you can, by intentionally design, you can actually color it any, any emotion that you choose if you know what, what verb to use. Mm -hmm.